back, relax, maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys, so I am here today to do a book review and the book that I'm going to be reviewing is one I was so, so excited to receive. This is Children of Earth and Sky and it was very kindly sent to me by Hodescape, so thank you so much to them. It's by Guy Gavril Kay, it's the second Guy Gavril Kay book I've ever read and I really, really enjoyed this one. So what is this all about? If any of you have heard of Guy Gavril Kay before or you've read any of his stuff before then you probably know that what he tends to write is historical fantasy. This means that he kind of bases his worlds in our own history and he kind of manipulates it to his own means to make it into a fantastical story. So it's a lot more historic based than it is magical. It's a very low fantasy, it doesn't have an awful lot of magic but there is magic within this. This story in particular focuses on the Ottoman Empire and Venice and also on Dubrovnik so if you have any interest in any of those then you'll probably be really intrigued by how he has manipulated those things in this. I really really liked the way that he kind of manipulated these historical events to make it his own story. He changes all the names, he kind of makes it into something new and fresh even though it is based in history of our own world. As with all Guy Gavril K books I tend to find that these are a bit of a slow burn. You start off quite slow and gradually you get more and more intensity until you reach the end and you realise you're in love with all the characters, you're really hooked into what's happening and particularly within this there's one character who I was kind of a bit, mm, he's okay for most of the book and then the ending he just changed in my whole opinion and became really really important so Guy Gavril K does like to do that sort of thing. This was punchy, it was exciting, it was filled with life once you got past the sort of slow beginning. What I love about this is it's kind of a story of exploration, it's kind of about a couple of characters going out of their comfort zones, doing things they wouldn't normally do, traversing to new lands where they're maybe not as welcome as they would like, and encountering lots of politics that they are unfamiliar with, and having to sort of traverse and navigate that is quite stressful for them. What I liked about this is that the sort of historic referencing makes this feel like a very grounded fantastical book. There's a lot of reality sort of pushed in there even though it is a fantasy book at the end of the day. We have three main characters who we follow for most of the storyline, although there are a couple of other characters that do come into play as well. The three most memorable for me were Danica, who is a character that we follow right from the very beginning. She's a young female and she actually has a link to her grandfather. Her grandfather has died and she has this sort of psychic link to him and she can communicate with him and he can talk back to her. And at first I thought, oh wow, this is a little bit weird, she's a bit delusional, but I think it is actually a magical aspect and it was pretty cool to see her grandfather talking back to her as the story went on and helping her navigate some situations that maybe she wouldn't have done as well in without his help. So that was pretty cool and I liked her a lot as a character and I thought that she was quite fresh, quite young, quite excitable, but definitely had control in the moments that she needed it and I liked to see that as well. She is on a revenge quest for most of this book. She had a young brother who was stolen away from her when she was young and she hasn't seen him since, she doesn't even know if he's alive anymore, but she wants to go and find out and she wants to try and discover what's happened to him and so she's kind of on a revenge quest for a lot of this against the people who stole him from her, which are the Osmanali. The next person that we're following is Pero Villani, who is a highly talented painter. As I said, at first I thought his storyline was a little bit so-so. I was interested, but I wasn't really hooked into his storyline. But as this went on and he travelled to an entirely new place and he got enmeshed in the politics and craziness going on there, I think that he became one of the most interesting characters within this book. So if at first he seems very unassuming and very polite, Maybe not quite what he uh, turns into at the end and he definitely gets embroiled in some stuff he could not have expected and has to deal with a lot of things that he could never have anticipated so it was pretty pretty cool to see 
that and to see how he navigated those problems that he encountered and also to see how he balanced one person who was talking to him against the other person who was talking to him as they both had different agendas and different manipulative schemes that they wanted to involve him in, which I really liked. The final character that we follow largely is called Damaz and Damaz is a young Osmanli who is being trained to become a fighter in the army. Most young men in the Osmanli culture go into the army and help to defend against the other lands and go and steal children and things like that. So he goes and he's trying to train to get into the army as well. And he's a young boy who we follow. He doesn't have any parents or any family as far as he knows. And we're sort of following his adventures as he rises through the ranks and how he does that. Those three for me were the most interesting three within the story, although we did have other characters such as Leonora and Marion and the Caliph and all of them I thought were still very interesting. They just weren't the main focus. Of the main three, I would say that Danica is probably my favourite just because of how much of a focus she was and how I could relate to her character a little bit more than the other two in the story. And I just think that her revenge quest, I mean, it's fairly stereotypical, a lot of fantasy does it, but I think Guy Gavril Kay is a writer who knows how to do things well and whatever trope he decides to employ, it still feels fresh when he has turned his hand to it. So it was really fresh, really lovely to see her as a growing young individual female character who wasn't a stereotype as such. She was doing something stereotypical, but she herself was a individual who I liked. Plus, she has an awesome dog who is called Tico, and he is fiercely, and I mean fiercely, loyal to her, so that was pretty cool to see him as well. The pacing of this book, it builds up layer upon layer as you go through. I would say that the first 100 or 200 pages is a slow burn, but once you're into the main story, things start to pick up and pick up and pick up, and the momentum just keeps on building until you're at the end and you're completely amazed by how much he's managed to pack into the one book. So. I really, really enjoyed it and I had a great time reading it and immersing myself in the world and the culture and just enjoying what Guy Gavril Kay has laid out for us because it does feel like an alternate history for a magical world and I really enjoy that. I will say that if you guys are interested in historical fantasy, this is a great place to start. Any of Guy Gavril Kay's books are really, really good. Um, I've only read Tigana and this one so far, but I've enjoyed both immensely and I think I probably prefer this one a little bit. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you guys have read this or read any of his other work down below. I know loads of other authors cite Guy Gavril Kay as being the master of fantasy. On the back of this, it says that there's a quote from Sanderson saying the greatest living author of epic fantasy. And he's pretty fantastic, I must admit. His stories just feel so gritty and real. It's It feels like it is because of how much history and research goes into them. So I really, really enjoyed this and I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I would really recommend that you guys check out some Guy Gavril Kay. I know that they are long books, but they're worth it. They're 100% worth it and I really, really love his stuff. Thank you all for watching. Leave me your comments about Guy Gavril Kay or other epic fantasy authors below and I will see you all in another video very, very soon. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Come back and chat with me again